particularly for that banking space, as I said. Not good news out of the banking sector. It does look like there are a lot of people pulling their money out of European banks. In fact, we were looking at a report in Spanish newspaper El Mondo talking about 1 billion euros being pulled out of just Bankia. That's the third largest uh, bank in Spain, which of course is looking at nationalization um, over the past week. So with the banking runs, of course, it's a matter of confidence. And the problem is that the banks don't have enough cash to cover deposits. And that's the way our banking system works. So looking towards those banks, there has been some speculation that we could see Moody's come out to downgrade those uh, Spanish banks. And of course, speech overnight coming out to downgrade Greece. So unfortunately, not looking too good for the banks because of the European situation. Funding costs very much in focus. We have a look at the US session. We did see the S&P 500 down by 1.5%. The data coming out there wasn't too good, but the real shocker was the Philly index, which showed a reading of negative 5.8. Expectations actually were for a positive reading of 10. And of course, if we have a look at the employment part of that index, looking pretty horrible there. So altogether, not a good session in the US, not a good session for the banks. We have a look at our miners. We did see BHP falling 1.4% in both London as well as the US ADRs. And if we have a look at Rio Tinto, the falls were a little bit steeper down by 1.9% in London and down by 2.1% in, uh, in the US. So I guess the question is, where's the safe havens going to be? And investors really rushing towards those US Treasury bonds. In fact, if we have a look at the yields on US Treasury bonds, they're, they're almost at a record low. And of course, investors on the market probably looking at those safe haven defensive areas such as consumer staples, utilities, are also looking at healthcare and the telecom space on the Aussie market. And uh, in terms of something else we're looking at today, perhaps Pan Ost at the Open, it's been holding its AGM and it's announced a maiden dividend. Was that well flagged, Julia? If we have a look at Panos, it has been tracking quite well. Um, if we have a look at the stock price, though, it hasn't been doing so well. If the stock is down by 16% in the last month, and that compares to the copper price, which is down by 4.6%. Now, it is the AGM of Panos, and I think investors are going to be asking some tough questions. That is, uh, given the recent uh, weakness in commodity prices, how's it going to impact on Panos's uh, a profit projection, projections for the year and also the cash cost. We have a look at the forecast that Panos is using in terms of its gold forecast. It's 1800 US, um, US an ounce and of course gold prices underneath that at the moment. It's two major projects in Laos seem to be doing well. It saw our uh, first pour at one of its uh, new, newer projects in Laos. Uh, but altogether tracking well but unfortunately that softness that we've seen in uh, commodity prices, the problems in Europe, uh, the soften softening demand out of China probably all going to be in focus in terms of this annual general meeting. Also in terms of funding costs, Panos has a $100 million facility and that's a floating facility so it's fixed at LIBOR plus a 4.5% margin and of course funding costs rising so the funding costs of these miners also rising.